Aloha, everybody. Welcome to Condo Insider on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Attorney Nalan. Joining me today is our guest, Mr. Mano Wing, CEO and owner of NK Management LLC. Mano is a graduate from the University of Hawaii and Manoa's Executive MBA program. His company, NK Management LLC, provides administrative support, site management, maintenance, resident, and general management services for condominium associations. Prior to establishing his own company, he worked as a property manager for so many years, respectively at Touchstone Properties, Hawaii First, and Associate Hawaii. Mano is the current general manager at Kapiolani Residence. Welcome, Mano. Thank you, Na. So today we invited you to explain to us the different roles, job duties of different types of property management professionals working in the industry of, uh, you know, in the condominium industry. Um, our goal is to help people understand uh, what, you know, do such professionals respectfully do and what would be the best way to communicate with each type of them. Uh, we also hope you can share with us some career tips for people who might be interested in, you know, becoming such a professional. Uh, so we've always heard all these different job titles, uh, general manager, resident manager, site manager, property manager. What do these titles mean? Yeah, all good questions now. And, and when you when you start diving into the condo, the condo world is what uh, Susavio, uh, one of my mentors, likes to put it, the, uh, the condo world. Uh, property manager can mean a lot of things and, and generally in real estate, property managers are usually the rental managers in real estate, right? Where they, the owners hire, you know, rental agents, uh, pay them about 10% of a fee and they'll, they'll find long-term or short-term tenants, whatever the agreement may be. But when you get into, when you get into the condo side, you know, it starts off, uh, like property managers at, at the, the managing agents, which is like, you know, Hawaiiana, Touchstone, Hawaiian properties, and those types of properties, uh, uh, those companies where um, owners send their maintenance fees into. A lot of those prop, a lot of those property managers, their titles are property managers. Um, some of those titles could be community association managers or portfolio managers or account executives. They just manage a large portfolio, basically, right? right. But they they're all property managers. Okay, so I guess to answer your question, the word property manager can mean a lot of things. It just depends on who you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, uh, a site manager would be, it could be a lot of things too, right? Site managers can run a building that's 50 units or a few hundred units. Um, and they, um, they basically do the same things that resident managers do. But resident managers are often um, provided a place to live on site, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the general manager. I would say the difference between a resident manager and general manager, some general managers live on site. So some general managers are resident managers. And then some general managers don't live on site, but they're given a housing allowance, right? I so see. It, just, it just, again, it all depends. Uh, but when you start earning the title of general manager, those are the, those salaries and responsibilities of those individuals are often much higher because they're overseeing a larger staff where they have to submit timesheets and do more work with the managing agent and the board and the budget and stuff like that, right? Um, you know, not to discredit all the hardworking site managers out there, but some of them may not have the skill set to, to work in a larger setting with tons mm -hmm. of amenities and, you know, running, running operations in a, in a large building 24-7, you know? Uh, some of the smaller buildings will hire site managers that kind of do the work of a janitorial person and a, and a maintenance person all in one, you know, uh, those smaller buildings will require less admin work and uh, so forth and so on. So, yeah, I hope that answers the, uh, the questions. Yeah, so I guess, you know, for site managers, maybe that could be some uh, entry-level position, someone who just, you know, got your foot into this industry started doing, but it sounds like general manager, you do have to be very experienced and could be very experienced property managers, uh, you know, with combined experience inside manager, that will entitle you 
to apply for that position, usually you get a much higher pay and you're really in the manager role because there will be a lot of subordinate employees who report to you. You're sort of in charge of the building. It's all, you know, administrative, uh, you know, like maintenance and security, HR issues. It's really important uh, for, especially for bigger projects, right? 100%. And um, yeah. and thanks again for inviting me on the show. No, it's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on you making partner at your firm and everything. I've, I've seen you work. Oh, that with. was three years ago, though. It's no, it's been a late, needed, but thank it's you. A, it's a late congratulations because we're yeah, supposed to But um, <laughs> no, okay. uh, and, and you know, you, you had reached out because I was um, – <laughs> I was on the, the cover of that magazine recently, the, the Building Hawaii magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, just for the record, I wanted to go, go on air and say that, you know, um, there's a lot of people I didn't thank um, in there because I didn't necessarily work for some of these management companies. Like, I, I've never worked for Hawaiiana. I was never on their payroll, right? Or Hawaiian properties. I, I, I never worked there, but I did work at the other places. But even though I never worked there, I was what I was their subcontractor at many, many, many buildings. Mm -hmm. I've in my career, Hawaiian managers have hired me at a lot of associations and my staff, as well as Hawaiian properties. And there's a couple of executives at Hawaiian properties that said, Hey man, you never thanked us. And I was like, I never worked for you guys, but you know, technically I did. And I, I just want to say thank you to all the managing agents out there that have give, given our team an opportunity to represent uh, your association, specifically Kevin Agena from Hawaiian Properties and Glenn Suzuki. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've also, I'm so glad to, you know, see how you, you know, develop in your role and making such a, you know, good success, especially also as, you know, I know you're also, you know, with immigrant background. So I'm really proud of that. And having you worked in these different professional roles, what do you like about your profession and what do you, not like about it for people who are thinking about you know maybe try this you know that is a great question although i've never been asked that question i think it's quite easy for me to answer and i probably wouldn't know how to answer this if you asked me a few years ago but you know when we become professionals in our space we get really good at what we do and we we sometimes we put on an act it's a professional act you have to you have to be confident you have to you have to re get back to the customer right away. You have to do all these things, right? But in the, at the end of it, you have to be yourself, right? And, and I think naturally I'm a really helpful person. And so in all of my buildings, there's so many di different demographics of people. There's mm -hmm. military veterans, you know, there's local, there's local Asian, there's Europeans, there's, there's mainlanders from Texas or California. I, I feel that I've lived all over the place and had so many experiences being an immigrant and I'm able to relate to residents in multiple languages. You know what I mean? I don't speak it, but thank God for chat GPT and Google translate. We can, we can do notices in multiple languages now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I, I feel comfortable um, being myself speaking to residents. And I, I, is, is that, does that answer your question? So good people skill sounds like would be a necessary, you know, tool you have to have to be in this industry. Sounds like that would be a big plus, right? I, that's one of them. Uh, you have to <laughs> have really, really thick skin <laughs> also. Yeah. Understandably, because people usually reach out to these managers when they have problems and some of them may not be in a good mood by the time they need to reach out to a property manager or general manager, right? Yeah. If my phone is ringing, some association is having a hard time, right? And what I enjoy is being a problem solver. And um, <clears throat> I think we, we, I love to sit down with the board and, and set goals and crush those goals together. And that's, that's, that, that's, a, you know, that's, that's what I enjoy doing, doing hard things and making it, making it easy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, just, just accomplishing things that, that other people were, where people failed at because, um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, we're, you're asking me about what's the difference between all these different types of managers, right? And it's basically there's entry level, and then the, it, you work your way up to to a GM, right? And all the top GMs in town are making top dollar. So people that are getting into the industry, my recommendation, the pro tips are 
you know, get into a small building and no matter where you're at in the process, find a mentor, right? And there's there's best, best building practices. Call me, I'll give you free advice. You know, every building you ha should have a tailored approach because the X, Ys, and Zs that I do for this association is going to be different over here. Plus, depending on their budget, you know, some people always say like, oh man, this building over here has this and this and this. Yeah, but you have like 1,000 units and they only have 100. You can't afford it. You know, you have to be very realistic on, on mm -hmm. what the budget is and what you can afford, right? So we'll have a good sense about the numbers, you know, budget, you know, maybe have some building maintenance related technical background that helps as well, for sure. Right. Yeah, and, and, and what I've seen lately is there's a lot more reserve studies, uh, types of companies, third parties that are forming because associations are having a very hard time with their budget and their reserve studies. You know, um, inflation's going up, contractors pricing is going up. Everybody's got to get hold of their budgets, right? So, you know. Yeah, you there's also a change in the statute. That's also why, you know, good opportunities there. And crises always bring opportunities, as we always see. Um, okay. Yeah, so, you know, what would be the preferred way, you know, or the best way to communicate it with them? Because everybody is so busy, especially they could be on site, you know, they could be, uh, you know, in a meeting. Uh, what would be what would be the recommended way to communicate with such professionals to you know basically improve uh, like a owner or tenant's communication with them? Technology and cloud. You can be multiple places at, at once. Um, <clears throat> I used to follow my one of my mentors around, Jim Merrill. He he's arguably one of the most knowledgeable guys in the industry over Touchstone. And every board meeting, he would literally lug um, <laughs> the bylaws, which are like this thick, declarations and house rules, he had it all printed out. He carried everything with him. And um, <clears throat> any question that any resident had, he said, hold on one second, let's dumb through it. Oh, it says here that it's not allowed, <laughs> you know? Or mm -hmm. common area says this, and he'll just look it up, <laughs> you know? and um, you know, that's a, a lot of times other other property is like, oh, let me let me you know get the attorney to involved and you know, but a lot of times you can just read the documents and the documents will answer the questions. And um he was always available to do that. So to answer your question the way I do it now, I'm not gonna lug around all these books. I mean, you you, you digitize everything and put it on the cloud and um you can have access to data at your fingertips, you know. Um to me that's a faster way of giving customer service. You can email things to people, you can text message, you know, you have to use the tools in, in, in this, this day and age. So I think Zoom is also a good way for people, especially during COVID, mm -hmm. you know, to do, to do board meetings. It's mm -hmm. quite, quite efficient. Mm -hmm. You have a chair that, you know, so. Um, uh, learning how to do one hour board meetings too. I should teach a class on that. I see. So I guess Perfect. for owners and residents, they also need to understand, uh, you know, a property manager may not have the answer you want at the fingertip, you know, because they manage so many projects. As you said, they may need to look up the project documents or even consult with the attorney uh, for the association. So probably better if something, you know, urgent, I would say make a phone call, but then definitely follow up with something with email that way. Uh, you know, people can go back and refer to that to get, you know, a record of uh, what was communicated and what needs to be done for a follow up. It's, does that sound fair? Yes, I would definitely, um, you know, again, you have to learn the the ways other people communicate. I mean, you can, you can some people communicate through social media nowadays through business, right? So um, how do they like to respond to you? They, they prefer to be texted. Um, on their phones, do they prefer to be send it to me on text, send it to me on WhatsApp, email me? You, you just have to ask how people want things delivered, mm -hmm. really, and just customize that approach. But there are so many different ways you can share information on the cloud and and you know collaborate nowadays and work efficiently. And I, I would love to do a separate seminar on that because um, I, I I think that um, I think the workforce that serves the condo industry could 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 be better, you know. Um, I think a lot of times we have a lot of classes for 
general managers and stuff, but no one's really teaching the admin people how to be faster. You know, because I'll sit with people. I used to teach keyboarding at Tamariki High School. I was a teacher for a very short time, but, you know, just cutting and pasting, using hotkeys, you know, keyboard efficiency is, a, you know, I can type 80 words a minute. So I, I think if you trained admin people to do work more, you know, more efficiently, uh, I, I think the, the workforce could, could also um, increase, uh, you know, productivity. Because well, I like it. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why I say that is because when we pick up, um, when we pick up, buildings it's it's been neglected but there's somebody you know couldn't service it or just didn't show up for like three months or maybe they struggled with admin you know and they're they're great janitors and they promoted them and just couldn't do the admin work so a lot of the admin side of, of the association suffer badly i mean i think mm -hmm. they, they agree all over the place on that so i see uh, but like many other industries, especially post pandemic, um, you know, I think um, party management companies are also struggling to try to staff for their workforce, right? So it's always a challenge to find good candidates to fill those open positions. So why, you know, what are the special challenges unique to this industry? You know, um, I, have, I have some friends of mine from the MBA program and they're, they're getting married this weekend. And I wanted to talk to a few of them because there is no curriculum at UH that teaches like condo management type stuff. Mm. There's over, there's around, there's between two to 3,000 condominiums in, in Hawaii, okay? That's, that's the, that's the inventory. And there's really no governing body that standardizes training for all the janitors. Now, granted, there's organizations like IRAM, and they have the accredited resident manager, but that's very basic to me, and I, I don't want to discredit that organization or what that is, but there's a lot more, you know, and I, I maybe maybe we can take that and, you know, expound on that type of training. And, and then Community Association Institute, CI, they also offer training for board members and managers and stuff like that, but I think we can do more. I think the association can, I mean, I think, I think the industry can do, can do better. And, um, I'm actually working on that because I've been networking with a lot of the super block guys, uh, those building managers, those GMs, super experienced. Um, and a, a handful of them, they're dealing with construction defects with these developer issues. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the building, right? It's luxuriness, it's salary, it's people, it's board. Um, whatever the manager, you know, uh, absorb whatever negligence or construction wise or good or bad we have to deal we have to deal with it right and I think you know being organized administratively will is there there there, there has to be a better a better training system because you know um, I think boards go from staff to staff member to manager to managers hoping they find find somebody and it's yeah, that's that's the I whole, see. So the then whole. like for the existing, you know, um professionals in this field, uh, what are their typical academic or training background? Um, do do they are are they like a fresh graduates from college or no, they usually switch career? I mean, you if, know? if you're looking at all the top GMs in Kakako, their their backgrounds are all over the place, right? Uh there's Leland Nye for he's at Allure. He he worked he he has a college degree. He worked for Hawaiiana for a while. Then he became a GM, mm -hmm. um, like the Comini brothers at, and Dwayne uh, De Felipe. I think there was was in hospitality and um, hotels and security. Um, wow. Brian Liu from uh, a, a, um, Hawaiia. I think he came from a social. So there's some people that come from the the managing agent side. Um, some people come from security. But it just, you know, I mean, the industry, it's its a lucrative industry. A lot of people get into it for, you know, um, but yeah, you kind of fall into it, right? <laughs> some some people come through through real estate, but there's really no, there's really no entry point. It's just, yeah, there's not, there's not. So right? how but, did you, how did you become one? What motivated you to pursue this industry initially? I was playing tennis with a uh, with Keone Gaspar, <clears throat> he was the owner of uh, Blazing Stakes Atkinson, 
and his dad is uh, Jim Merrill. And um, they do. Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. You're happy, but you're a really good tennis player, right? As I recall. And, and Keone is like a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, and he would just punish me. But I think um, that was like one of the best introductions that I've had was my introduction to Jim. And then, you know, and I've met tons of other people, you know, um, over at uh, Hawaiiana or and and Hawaiian properties like Kevin again and Glenn Suzuki. Those guys have, you know, um, I, and then the thing is, I work with a lot of these managing agents now mm -hmm. and these property managers, and I used to work with them. I was I was in the cubicle next to them when I was at Asosha, you know, so there's there's an industry relationship you know like oh <laughs> when i stop by their offices like they're i know they're admins you know like like you know it, you know like how property managers jump around from Hawaiiana to hawaiian properties so do the admins so do the accountants you know so it's the industry is it, it's it's really cool it's it's cool to see you know the, the industry feeding a lot of families here you know um as well as yourself right you're 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 growing out the condo division in your firm how's that going it's been good, yes. So uh, I guess I really, I think today's show then will be a valuable one because we really want to inspire people to maybe consider this industry. If, you know, either you haven't thought about that, perhaps you're in the process of thinking about a career switch or even I, for high school students or, you know, yeah. college students who are thinking about your next step in life. So uh, what would be your advice to them for those uh, very young people, like either in high school or college, you know, you know, dreaming about their future, what they would do, what would you give them if, uh, you know, this could be a good one to start and how do you prepare for that? Hmm. Do, you, do, you, do you like superheroes? Do you watch? My boys love them, yeah. Do they like, do they like Batman? Batman, yes. Uh, Superman, yes. Batman, Iron Man, yes. Batman used to, um, he used to work with Commissioner Gordon and when Commissioner Gordon needed him, he, he put the bat signal, right? <laughs> And he he would call him on the bat phone. <laughs> so when my number, there was a time when man, our, I I I was I was at Scheidler, at UH, and um, I just started the company in 2015, and I uh, I I recruited a lot of the uh, undergraduates from the Scheidler Business College, and we wow. rec we recruited heavily, and these guys are all tech savvy. Um, some of them are still in the industry. Some of them went to other contractors, but there's a season where like the company grew like 400% that year. I think it was in 2018. And, um, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it was a great way to get people in the industry. You know, we were going to a lot of the, um, <clears throat> human resource recruitment at UH and I'm not I'm not that big anymore because I'm I'm kind of doing more of the consulting and doing the bigger buildings. But when the staff, you know, it it, it was a great way to get people to in, in the industry. Um at at those uh what are these the the job fairs? You know? Yeah, there's one actually upcoming. The city's job fair is upcoming, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So I used to, I used to, I used to set up booths and um, you know, um Getting into the industry also is is tough, and 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 again, I, I wanted to share my my frustration a little bit because it's not standardized. And um, I'm I'm talking I'm talking to a few educators at UH to develop a curriculum to actually teach it, um, and uh, I don't think one exists right now. So maybe I'll go back and get my PhD and do it. That's that's actually a serious conversation, but. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll, you know, but somebody, somebody should, somebody needs to, and, uh, you know, up until then, you know, um, you'll just get lucky if you have a good resume that can, you know, service everything you need, right? And get your foot into the door and then you'll get all the training you need. Hope, hope for the best. But I think if you're mm -hmm. really trained in this and, uh, then you'll have more answers, right? So, you know, and you, you, you off the bat so sometimes you have to wait for managers to kind of like a couple of months to get used to it but sometimes you may not you may not you may turn things around sooner you know the timeline for certain associations are different depending on the needs and the budget and everything so 
So for so, people who got some years of work experience under their belt, you, if they're thinking about applying for an open position as a property manager, what would be the minimum requirements? Um, now, see, I mean, you ask, are, are you asking to do on-site management or general manager or... Go, you can, work, I mean, because, why don't we start know, with a site manager and property manager? Yeah, yeah because see, you could go work for the managing agent also. Yeah. And those, those yeah. guys are the ones that take minutes and they, they deal with the contractors, mm -hmm. help you with your budget. Um, you know, there's a liaison between you and the associate, you know, the, the managing agent and, and, and ownership. So that's another route to take. And that's, that's another lucrative industry. I think um, a full portfolio, um, a seasoned manager might juggle 10 to 15 properties, mm -hmm. you know, especially now with technology the, the way it is. So um, I think I think if you're new, just getting into the industry, the managing agents will give you some small buildings that, you know, if you, if you mess up, you know, they're, they're giving you the ones that just don't pay that much, right? You're going to get like the small bit and they can move the 20 unit walk-ups and you'll probably have like 10 of those. You may not enjoy it either because, you know, the small buildings don't, they don't pay that much. You might deal with board members that just, they're not like executive CEOs, right? Not, um, you, you might deal with board members, just, 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 you know, regular, regular like maintenance people that, that they just live somewhere that, you know what I mean? They're going to take their, their knowledge and their education as far as they can while serving on a nonprofit board, right? Because these, these associations are nonprofits, you know, and there's another fiduciary responsibility with being a board member, right? So anyways, I'm kind of jumping diff to different tangents, but mm -hmm. uh, getting in the industry um, as a site manager with no college, you can, you can do, you can, you, you don't need college. You don't need college to do this, right? I think what college does it, it might be impressive for some board members because it shows that you've completed something difficult. But, um, you know, it depends on what your degree is in. If it's in business, sure, you, you, should, be, you should be expected to be a high-level communicator, writing, writing good notices, um, you know what I mean? Effectively communicating with vendors, you know, and, 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 and being, being helpful like that. But again, um, at the end of the day, it's hospitality, right? So I see. You come with an okay. open heart and, and you're helpful, even if you don't know the industry, but you're a helpful person. If you're naturally a helpful person, this is this is a good industry to be in. That's you know, great. Because That's some people, their 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 love language is acts of service, right? If you're a service type of person mm -hmm. and have a, a understanding personality to deal with multiple types of people, then this is a, an industry for you, right? But you know, if you're sensitive and you don't know how to multitask, maybe it's not for you. But if you want to get better at multitasking, this is definitely there's tons of challenges get thrown at you every day that you have to like what was important yesterday might be moved on the back burner tomorrow because something else more more priority came up right so it, it's a constant juggling act of, of of priorities right so um using the google calendar or if you're on, if you're using outlook use the outlook calendar regardless sync your calendar to your phone everybody has a phone nowadays and if you're not if you're not using the calendar you know, when, you know, Alakai Mechanic was showing at 3 p.m. tomorrow, you copy all your team members, right? Those basic communication type stuff like that can can also um, be the success or failure of a, of a team, right? So when I started this company doing site management in 2015, I wanted to give a team approach, you know, kind of blending white collar and blue collar work together with all this information on the cloud. And, um, it's worked well, you know. Uh, we we still pick up buildings where they will create a Gmail account for the building. I'm like, <laughs> it's funny to me that resident managers, some resident managers, I manage, they'll use their personal emails, like their Yahoo accounts for business. I I just I don't agree with that, right? Because if they get fired, all of that information that was for the building is lost, right? So. Mm -hmm. Here's another pro tip, guys. If your associations don't already have a cloud-based storage for the documents on file, give me a call. We got to get an email. Just stream. It's, it's all about streamlined communication because resident managers and site managers get fired or they quit or they move on. You're never going to, no one's ever going to retire there. So you have to have consistent information with the association, with the board, you know?
And they so we're leave. running out of time, but uh, thank you so much for the information. And uh, we really <laughs> appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Mano.